family you know what time it is take a walk with me in this beautiful park one of my favorite places on earth i'm alone i'm able to meditate i love it the sun is just it's shining ever so gently this morning just touching my skin not burning me up I mean, it's a perfect day, but on a day like today, almost 2,000 years ago, it wasn't as joyous for some as we look at this day during Holy Week or Passion Week. Now, there are some in the church who commemorate on this day the harrowing of hell. It's called the harrowing of hell, which comes from 1 Peter chapter 3 between verses 18 and 20 which it may be your interpretation and personally it's my interpretation that even though Jesus was put to death in the flesh he's quickened by the spirit like the spirit in that flesh could never die therefore he has the power to invade Hades she owes hell and the next verse says that he by this spirit he preached to the spirits that were in prison the next verse he clears it up which at some point in time were disobedient then he talks about the days of noah when god was long suffering patient he put up with a lot of stuff a lot of mess with the children of men in the earth and then he flooded the earth, right? So, it's Psalms interpretation, and even mine, that Jesus preached to people who had already died. Some believe that he preached to angels, fallen angels that were in prison, but <laughs> why would he preach to a few fallen angels in spiritual prison when there were plenty of demons roaming the face of the earth? And it doesn't seem characteristic of Jesus just to show off like they saw him when he rose from the dead, right? But <laughs> I'll leave that there. This is not what I want to make this video about. I want to think about the disciples. How it must have felt, especially with Peter. Peter knows that when he had the opportunity to confess that he was in the company of Jesus, that he was one of the inner circle, that he was close to the Savior, that he denied Jesus three times after Jesus had already told him he was going to do it three times before the rooster crowed. Just think about how miserable he must have felt today almost 2,000 years ago think about the disciples think about it like he had told them multiple times that he had to die but then he would raise again from the dead but who was going to raise him up from the dead <laughs> they didn't have they definitely didn't have the faith to their understanding their power came from him right and he's no longer here. He actually died. When we knew he had the power to save himself, to do some things miraculous, to even disappear, to escape them, Jesus instead gave himself over to the wicked, the religious, <laughs> the religious Jews and the wicked Romans. And he died. He did die. He wasn't replaced by somebody at the cross. The spirit of Christ in that body did not leave the body and just let a man hang. Jesus died. But on a day like today, you're focusing on yesterday. He's really gone. Like there was a shock 
And you had witnesses like John. John the disciple was there to witness this. Jesus hanging on the cross saying it is finished. He gives up the ghost. These people are gone. They didn't even bury Jesus. Jesus had two what some call secret disciples. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus that actually buried him. Prepared his body with spices. Wrapped him up. Laid him in Joseph's new tomb. <laughs> which we know Jesus borrowed. But they weren't there to bury Jesus. So there's a lot of questions. Not only that, it's the Sabbath day. You can't do any work. The Jews wanted to hurry up and do their work because they wanted to prepare for Passover and they wanted to get prepared for Sabbath. And Jesus' disciples, at this point, it's like they're hopeless, right? It's Sabbath day. We can't go and prepare his body today. That's work. We, we, we don't know what's going on. Jesus is not here anymore. And they're not able to let Jesus' words resonate in their hearts, right? They, they, they're just looking at the shock of my Savior, my Master, my Teacher, my Rabbi. He's gone. He's actually dead. So put yourself in that position. I know many times we would say if we were there and we heard Jesus say what he said multiple times that he must die, that he must, he's going to be betrayed, that he pointed out Judas who was going to betray him. And now you know it was Judas that betrayed him because he was there with the people uh, when they arrested Jesus and he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Like, you know, there are certain things that Jesus said that actually happened. Like, we say if we were there, it would be different for us, right? But how do you know? This is something the world has never seen before. The life giver has given up his life. Who's going to give him life? And that's where tomorrow comes in. That's where a perfect understanding of who Jesus actually is comes in. And I can't wait, Lord willing, to finish the story on tomorrow if I'm still here. But if I'm not and you are, you know what happened. You know what happens. He got up. Let's talk about it tomorrow. God bless it.